Welcome to this Maxim Integrated Technical Tutorial. This short course will illustrate the step-by-step -step construction of the famous Smith chart and the basic use of the tool. The step-by-step -step approach will explain how this tool can be used to create a match network and an RF circuit. First, we want to de-stress the student who sees the Smith chart template completely blank for the first time. On the left side of this slide, you will see that the Smith chart is composed of many curves that cross over each other in an apparent disorganized structure. Well, before developing anything yet, you can observe that all the curves are circles, complete or partial, that can be grouped into two sets, green ones and black ones shown on the right side of the slide. The green ones are all horizontally tangent at the point 1, 0 on the graphic. The black ones are all vertically tangent at the point 1, 0 of the graphic. Communication between distant devices is made via connection lines that can be short or long and through air or free space. The problem is that signals are not traveling instantaneously. They can experience losses, interferences, and reflections when they meet obstacles in the form of a short, open circuit, or more generally, any difference in impedance. This slide shows some practical examples of waves that are distorted due to long distance propagation and obstacles causing reflected signals back into the input. When a signal is in DC or a low frequency, its wavelength is long, even greater than a few kilometers. In these cases, there's no noticeable difference in the signal along a conductive path in a PCB, which is usually tens of centimeters. The situation changes when the signal is in a high frequency. The wavelength becomes in the same order of magnitude as the distance between devices on a PCB. This slide illustrates why one same frequency signal may have different values in a PCB track. For example, let's consider an RF carrier of one gigahertz traveling in a PCB track of 10 centimeters. The wavelength is 30 centimeters. This means that the signal can be at its maximum on one side of the PCB and zero at the other side. In addition, the reflection and absorption phenomenon complicate things even more. We must understand how wires impedance, device input and output impedance, and distances affect signal propagation. Complex simulation, design tools, and lab equipment help RF designers to build and predict circuit behaviors, and the Smith chart is one of those tools. The above circuit summarizes the problem. The source VS with an internal impedance ZS is transmitting its signal to the receiving device ZL via a communication channel. Some examples of the communication channel can be a coax cable, a twisted pair, or a copper trace in a PCB. Both ZO for the line and ZL for the receiver will have their own impedance characteristics. Values of ZS, ZO, and ZL will impact the amount of signal reflected and absorbed. It is possible that a very small portion of VS will reach ZL if there's a strong mismatch between the different impedances. There are ways to adapt the different impedances to each other. This includes adding components at the transmitter or receiver and adjusting the line length. At first glance, the Smith chart uses one port S parameters or S11 that indicate the ratio in complex numbers of the reflected and injected signals. This is also called gamma. The idea is to tune the circuit elements in such a way that gamma is zero, which indicates that there's no reflection and all of the power in the block is transferred to the next block. Let's take a look at a basic example to start where block A has an internal complex impedance ZA, which is driving block B with an internal impedance ZB. Each impedance will have some purely resistive component R and some reactive component Jx. 
Thus, ZA and ZB can be labeled as RA plus JXA and RB plus JXB, respectively. Blocks A and B can be any dipole structure. For example, an amplifier input, filter output, twisted pair, or coaxial cable. We are interested in the portion of the reflected wave, gamma, at the boundary between the two blocks. Let's see what happens at the interface between ZA and ZB. The incident wave, labeled I, from ZA to ZB will have a portion transmitted, labeled T, and a portion reflected, labeled R. At the interface, we observe, one, there's a continuity of wave amplitudes, so I plus R must equal T, and energy must be conserved, so I squared over ZA must equal R squared over ZA plus T squared over ZB. With these two equations, we can compute the relationship between the reflection R and the impedances ZA and ZB. As we mentioned in the last slide, physical laws require that the amplitude of the waves from the two zones A and B must be balanced. Therefore, T must equal I plus R. Next, we need to standardize the equation to the incident wave. To do this, we will divide the equation by I. So we're left with T divided by I equals I divided by I plus R divided by I. The standardized equation might look like small t equals one plus small r, where small t is the ratio of the wave transmitted to ZB, and small r is the ratio of the wave reflected back to ZA. Since also energy must be conserved at any point in a steady state system, we get the following equation, which we can also standardize. Using algebra, we can convert this equation to little r equals ZB minus ZA divided by CB plus ZA. We can place small r in this equation with the reflection coefficient gamma. We can replace ZA with ZO and ZB with ZL to match our original circuit. Finally, we can standardize the equation again by relating to ZO, where little z equals ZL divided by ZO. You can see that when there is no reflection, or gamma is zero, the load impedance is equal to the source impedance, and little z equals one. Now, we can rewrite the z expression to understand the two sets of circle equations on the Smith chart. As you may remember from college, when complex numbers are equal, both their real parts and imaginary parts must be respectively equal, thus giving two different equations. By rearranging the terms, the real parts can be corresponded to the circle sets where all the centers are on the real axis and their radius equals one divided by one plus r. The imaginary parts can be represented by sets where all their centers are on the vertical axis and their radius equals one divided by x. The Smith chart simplifies the merging of the two sets of circles. For a given normalized load impedance, where Z equals R plus JX, it will be represented by the point, which is the intercept between the real circle corresponding to R and the imaginary circle corresponding to X. The Smith chart can also be seen as a graphic converter between normalized load impedance and the reflection coefficient gamma. This allows you to immediately see which impedance, Z, will give reflection and vice versa. The Smith chart can help to tune impedance in order to minimize reflection. Now we can go back to the complete Smith chart with multiple sets of interlaced circles. If we zoom in on the center of the Smith chart, you will notice that the middle of the chart is based on the point 1, 0. This is often called the prime center, and it corresponds to the source impedance C0. Most RF systems have a purely resistive impedance of 50 ohms. 
so we often use this value to normalize all the impedances. When the sourced impedance is 50 ohms, the point 0.10 will correspond to a purely resistive impedance of 50 ohms. We can move along the resistive axis to get points with a different resistive impedance. For example, a point 0.30 will represent a resistance of 3 times 50 or 150 ohms. A point at 0 0.5 will be 0 0.5 times 50 or 25 ohms. If you think back to our equations, we said that there's no reflection when the load impedance is equal to the source impedance. Will we use the Smith chart to plot the load impedance? And since we've used normalization to have our source impedance sit at the prime center of the Smith chart, this means we will want our load impedance to be as close to the center as possible in order to make ZL and ZO equal to each other. Now let's take a look at an example of how to locate the load impedance of 10 plus J5 on the Smith chart. First, we need to express the impedance in Cartesian format ZL equals R plus JX. Next, we need to normalize it by dividing by the source impedance, which is usually 50 ohms. Here we'll have R equals 10 divided by 50, which equals 0 0.2, and x, which equals 5 divided by 50, or 0 0.1. On the chart, we'll find the real circle corresponding to the value r equals 0 0.2. Then, we'll find the imaginary circle corresponding to the value x equals 0 0.1. The intercept of the two circles represent the given impedance. Read on the horizontal and vertical axis the value of gamma. Next, let's look at how to add elements to an existing impedance by using the Smith chart. If you add a pure resistor, move along the constant reactant circle as shown in blue. If you add a pure reactance, move along the constant resistive circle as shown in green. For an inductor, turn clockwise. For a capacitor, turn counterclockwise. Adding an element in parallel requires to work with the conductance and admittance. In the Smith chart, this can be done by rotating by 180 degrees from the current point. We can use these tactics to try and move the load impedance as close to the center of the circle as possible. A typical task for an RF engineer is to design a matching network to put between a device and a load of 50 ohms. In order to do this, the matching circuit and load must be adapted to ZS. We will see the method to follow using a Smith chart. The IC supplier typically provides the output impedance of their RF devices called S parameters. The customer has to design a network with resistors, capacitors, or inductors in order to match what is given at the load value, usually 50 or 75 ohms. Adapting ZS to ZL is to graphically link the two points on the Smith chart by jumping from circles. Each element will have their own specific movement. In the next course, we will learn how to effectively adjust these components to minimize reflection.